All right, well, this is Uncle Sam FM, and I am back. It's been a long time since I've made a um, streaming game video or whatever. Not streaming, but recorded a game video. So I guess I'm um, ready for the FM19 experience. I've been, uh, obviously, those of you who know me at all know that I put a lot of work into editing the database to incorporate a lot of the lower U.S. leagues. Um, by default, Football Manager only comes with Major League Soccer. But if you're like me and you're an American that loves soccer, you follow soccer here uh, at a lot of different levels. And so uh, I like to try and you know expand the American experience. And I, I go for the realistic experience. I know a lot of people like making databases where you have promotion, relegation, but unfortunately the reality is here we don't have that. We don't have promotion, relegation, and a lot of people hate that um, and I get that I think it would be fun to put in I don't I'm not one of these people that believes that it will make American soccer some sort of world power um, but I do think it would be fun and you know it might help our development process uh, I do have my opinions on that I'm not gonna try to dive too deep into all that though because this is about the game about football manager and so what I've done is I've created a database that makes that, re that attempts to recreate the American soccer pyramid, which is obviously unlike any other in the in the world. And so this game is kind of a journeyman game. I'm going to start at the lowest level of American soccer, and I'm going to try and work my way up as a manager. Now the reality is I can't take a NPSL team, which is the lowest level that I've I've added and promote them to MLS. That's that's not realistic. It doesn't happen. And so what I'm going to try and do is um, work my way as a manager up to Major League Soccer, starting at the lowest level, which the truth is no one has really done that. You could say you can make the argument that at Vancouver right now they have Mark Dos Santos who's kind of worked his way up, but nobody started from the very bottom and worked their way up. So hey, <clears throat> why not try to be the first? <laughs> so. Uh, what I thought we'd do this episode is first of all kind of look at the database, what you see when playing with my database, which is freely available for download and I will add it to the comment section where you can go to download that from the SI forums. But looking at, first of all, at the league I'm starting in and it is the National Premier Soccer League. <clears throat> Technically on the American Pyramid, I believe it's the fourth level but it, the, anything below the professional uh, leagues in the United States is not really official. But practically speaking, uh, the NPSL is in the fourth level. And it actually consists of four regions. And so I'm starting in the south region. I've picked my local team, the Emerald Force, located in Knoxville. Um, and they, they play in the southeast conference of the south region. And there are four conferences. The South, this is the Southeast Conference, um, and this is, I'll spend a little time here because this is where I will be beginning. These are the teams I'll be playing. Uh, Asheville City, located about an hour, hour and a half from Knoxville. Then you have Atlanta SC, Chattanooga FC, us, the Georgia Revolution, Greenville FC, Inter Nashville, and the New Orleans Jesters. So that's my conference. I'll play each of those teams twice. And a couple, I think it's four teams qualify for the playoffs to try and advance in the NPSL. You also have the Sunshine Conference in the South Region, and it's called that because all of the teams in the Sunshine Conference are in the state of Florida. And Florida is the Sunshine State. Um, then you have the Lone Star Conference called that because all of these teams are <clears throat> either directly in or located very close to the state of Texas, which of course the Texas is the Lone Star State. And then you have the Heartland Conference, um, and that is the NPL South region. There also there are three other regions in the NPSL. You have the Northeast region, which has three conferences, the North Atlantic, the Mid-Atlantic, and the Keystone Conference. And Keystone is called that because it is most of these teams are in or very near the state of Philadelphia, which is one of the Keystone State. Um, so then if you move further west in the NPSL uh, from 
the Northeast and the South regions, you have the Midwest region. And uh, it consists of three conferences, the East Conference, the Great Lake Conference, where all the teams are located near the Great Lakes. And then you have the North Conference, um, which has teams in kind of the Dakotas, Wisconsin, and I won't go too far into that. And then you have the West region, where you also have three conferences, the Northwest Conference, the Golden Gate Conference, and the Southwest Conference. So the MPSL consists of about 80 teams. And it and the what's now the United Soccer League 2, uh, USL League 2, those divisions really, they are essentially U23 leagues. And their purpose is to give, um, well, their primary purpose um, is to kind of give college players a chance to get some extra games because one of the problems we have in American soccer is our players really kind of hit a wall from the ages of 19 to 22, 23 and that's largely because the college soccer schedule is so limited they only play about 15 to 16 regular season games even the teams that advance all the way uh, to the finals of the NCAA tournament are only playing about 25, 26 games They've started putting in some spring games that, that are not official. Um, but for the most part, their, their, match, um, hmm, their match experience is limited. And so they don't get as, much, as many. They have a very long offseason. <clears throat> and so the NPSL and what is now the USL2 uh, exist to give those players some matches uh, during the summer months without hurting their college eligibility. Because here in the United States... You cannot play uh, a college sport while also being a professional. Uh, once you once you play a professional game in your sport, you are no longer longer eligible to play for a college team. And so a lot of a lot of guys go to college for the purpose of getting that degree. And so while that's um, good in a way, it also kind of hurts development. Uh, and so the NPSL and the USL two uh, exist for that region. Uh, for that reason is to help the college players in their development process um so looking at the usl2 uh, the usl2 consists of 11 divisions um, there are four conferences like the npsl and the northeast the mid-atlantic and the south atlantic are all make up the i believe it's the northeast um or east region or um, east conference of usl2 and then you have the southeast Deep South and Mid South make up the Southern Conference. The Central Conference is just is just the Great Lakes and the Heartland, and then the Western Conference is the Northwest Division, the Mountain Division, and the Southwest Division. So that's the USL two. So if I do well enough with the NPSL, I might move up to USL two. My hope is really though to skip USL two um, because in reality, um, in the American Soccer Pyramid. USL2 and NPSL are on the same level. Um, unfortunately, you can't. It's really difficult to try and do that in FM with the editor. So I made them two separate levels. Um, so in, you have you have, you have the NPSL, you have the USL2, and then the next step up would be for the American soccer experience would be um, college soccer. And what I've done with college soccer, it's really challenging because college soccer. In, in the NCAA Division One in the United States, you have a lot of conferences, and, you, and I've recreated that. Um, here you have the America East, American Athletic Conference, Atlantic 10. There's something like 25 conferences, 24 conferences, I think. And But you also, so teams will play everybody in their conference, and, and depending on the conference, how many conference games they play um, varies. Uh, for example, they like 10. I don't think they play 12 conference games. Uh, they play like 10, I think. So they'll play conference games. But in they also have non-conference games. And so one of the challenges that I had with the editor was figuring out how to make um, college teams play non-conference schedule. So what I did was I just created one big division. And I made it so that it groups all of the 212 teams, something like that. Uh, in the in college soccer into 20 different groups so that there are playing um, non-conference games and I made it also so that no two teams from the same conference can be drawn into the same group so for example Clemson here in group one they're in the Atlantic Coast Conference 
nobody in this group is in the Atlantic Coast Conference. So it's it's the most realistic experience I could create with Football Manager Editor. <clears throat> um, they All of the conference tournament champions, those that have a tournament, advance to the NCAA Championship, which is a 48-team one-off tournament. And this, again, this is all based on real life. Um, so you have the 24 conference champions and then 24 at-large bids go to the NCAA Tournament for a chance to win the, the national championship. Um, and then you get into professional soccer. Um, and professional soccer, right now in in the United States, you have three leagues that are would be considered Division Three, and I've got them in the game. Although this is the first season, and I, I recreated real life in 2018. None of these leagues existed. None of them played any games, and so that'll be the case in in my uh, game as well. So you have USL League One, you have the NPSL Pro, which is these are I believe there's 12 teams in it, maybe 11. And it will actually starts this year, which when I'm recording this video is 2019. So 2018, it did not exist. And what you had is, is Cal FC and the Oakland Roots. Cal FC is an amateur team that decided to jump up, try their hands at professional soccer. Oakland Roots is an expansion team. So they're just forming now. And then you had nine or eight or nine teams from the NPSL decide to uh, promote themselves to promote uh, professional soccer. So that'll be, again, these all started in 2019. Um, and I'll actually have to be competing against some of these teams. For example, Chattanooga FC will be an NPSL pro team, but right in, in 2018, they're in my conference, so I'll have to play them. And then you have the NISA, or the National Independent Soccer Association. Um, some of these have taken some liberty with the branding. Not many of these teams have announced their branding yet. Um, for example, under the Philadelphia Fury have and San Diego 1904 FC has, but none of these other teams have. So I've kind of taken some liberty there. Um, and then from Division Three, you move up to Division Two, the second level of America soccer, and you have the United Soccer League Championship Division. And I, this is realistic as in real life these are the 32 33 teams that played in the uslc which at the time it was just usl but these are the 32 33 teams that played in 2018 2019 that number will change obviously as uh, fc cincinnati will move to major league soccer and there'll be some expansion teams coming in <clears throat> and uh and in 2020 you'll have a couple more expansion teams enter the usl championship all this is recreated in my file and obviously the top level of american soccer is major league soccer and it expands in 2019 in my game adding fc cincinnati and then in 2020 it will bring in david beckham's inter miami uh, franchise as well as nashville fc who will promote from the usl championship now, i've also added some well the youth development and in the united states what we have is the u.s soccer development academy and this is a division with seven, div um, this is a league with seven divisions with several academies. And this is where the Major League Soccer teams, um, their academies compete. Now there's, there's some talk about maybe changing that because they don't feel like they're receiving enough um, competition in, in real life. But as of now, this is how it works and this is how it is in the game. You have the Northeast division, you have the Atlantic division, the Southeast Division, the Mid American Division, the Frontier Division, the Northwest Division, and the Southwest Division. And these are all the divisions of um, the United States Soccer Development Academy. <clears throat> and this is where, in, in FM, this is where all new American players are generated. Um, so, for example, LAFC Academy. These are, um, these are new gens. And this is, and all new gens enter at this level. They will then, if they're not signed by a foreign club or they're not signed by their MLS team, they'll move into uh, to the U.S. Well, actually, in my game, I have it set to where they'll enter into the NCAA to college soccer, where they can then be drafted into MLS. Um, and to, to be to credit the um, Sports Interactive staff, they've done a real good job of recreating. It's not perfect. 
right? But the U.S. but American soccer is a challenge recreating it perfectly. It's just not going to happen. But they've done a pretty good job, and so one of the challenges I faced though in creating this file, and again, my file is not perfect because it's just not possible. Um, I'm always making little changes, but it's impossible to make it perfect. And so what I've had to do is figure out a way to increase the number of player of American players being generated because they all are generated in the USSDA. I can't I can't make, for example, one of the USL championship teams generate players. So what I've had to do is create a lot of teams whose comp whose their um, primary competition is this is the US USSDA but I've just not added them to the division itself and that may not make a lot of sense but we'll I'll show you one example um, my local soccer club the Smoky Mountain Soccer Academy I've created them it says they're in the USSDA Southeast Division but as you can tell they are not but what does happen though is they do generate players as you can see um, they generate a few players, and so I, I've created something like 250 of these. These, and they're all real academies, uh, in the hopes that it can increase the influx of American-generated players, and it's worked for the most part. But again, it's not perfect. You still have professional teams signing players away from academy teams, um, which is not supposed to be able to happen. You have college teams signing players away, um, professional teams signing players away from a college team. So. It, it's not perfect, but it's going to be as close as you can get it and to make it realistic. Um, so that's the structure of my file. Um, let's kind of look now at, well, let's, I'll real quick look at some of the other competitions I've thrown in. So I do have the, um, some professional preseason competitions, which we do a lot of those here in America. The ATX Pro Challenge. I have the Carolina Challenge Cup. Um, the Mobile Mini Sun Cup, which is a big one. I think the Dynamo actually won this year. My team, yes. Um, are they, they didn't win it this year or last year. You have the IMG Sun Coast Pro Classic. You have the Las Vegas Pro Soccer Challenge. The Simple Invitational hosted by the Timbers. Um, the Walt Disney Pro Soccer Classic. And those are all designed to function as they do in real life. I've also, and this is just kind of looking at, I've, I've developed a file that modifies the Canadian um, Premier League which well really the Canadian pyramid in general I tried to recreate it as well as I could so that if you are a Canadian soccer fan you can participate as I I like I pay a little attention to Canadian soccer um, I've also let's see let's go to North I've got some club competitions that I've modified so we've got the Champions League is set to function as it does in real life. And actually the first year, the 2018 um, tree, uh, competition tree is is recreated exactly as it was in real life. Uh, and then also the CONCACAF League. And it's not scheduled yet, but it's next year. It will, it's been um, recreated to adapt to new changes that have been recently been made, which the CONCACAF League will now consist of, I believe, 22 teams. I think 10 teams... Um, the four American teams, the Canadian champion, the four Mexican teams, and the Caribbean Cup winner automatically go to the Champions League. But then some of the Central American and Caribbean qualifiers have to play their way into the Champions League through the CONCACAF League, including the Canadian Premier League champion. Um, and they'll have to go through the CONCACAF League as well. And again, this is the, all these are available on my download and my um at si.com the community forums <clears throat> uh let's see other changes i've made i do have some international competitions i threw in so uh the usa january camp every january the united states hosts a camp where they bring in mostly domestic players and um give them a couple weeks training and they play a couple friendlies and in this one, you can see they'll play Serbia and Bolivia. And this is, again, based on real life. Uh, I have also thrown in the, a competition I call the Copa Nueva Mundo, which is um, 
which there's been a lot of talk about this. So the United States hosted the Copa America in 2016 where they brought in the um, champions. Well, actually, no, they brought in uh, the 10 Combat Bowl nations and they brought in six qualifiers from North America and had a 16-team tournament. It was a lot of fun. It was a big success and there was talk about, and there even still is, talk about trying to make that a recurring competition. And so I've thrown it in, really just kind of for fun. Um, again, it's still being talked about, so it may happen. I've also set it up to where, I don't know if this will, if this will show, but CONCACAF teams can now qualify for the Copa Sudamericana, which again, there's talk about this. The CONCACAF used to send teams to the Copa Sudamericana, but when Champions League format for CONCACAF changed, uh, you had games, you had matches in the fall. And so that made it impossible for a team to play in both the Sudamericana and the CONCACAF Champions League. But now, the CONCACAF Champions League, for the most part, for most teams, only occurs in the spring. So that kind of freed them up. And so I said it, you can't, you won't be able to see it here because none of these teams are, they don't enter until I believe the second round. Uh, but CONCACAF Champions League winners and runners up now qualify for the Sudamericana just to make it a little more fun. So with all that said, let's dive in uh, to my, my squad. And it's not very good. Um, so this is my, um, the guys I have so far. And as you can tell, this is not a super strong team. <laughs> um, well, it's actually really hard to tell just from looking at this. So let's look at some of their attributes. First of all, I will go to just like, okay, so my goalkeepers, these are my goalkeeper attributes that I look for. And these two guys up here, Dominguez and Juarez, yeah, they don't rank very high on these. So um, probably going to have to look for a new goalkeeper. Wingbacks, so this is this guy, this guy, maybe this guy. I might drop this guy back. Um, not great there either. Um, and I like to play a very possession style of soccer. I'll get into my tactics in a minute. But so like I'm looking at passing ratings and these are all very low. Um, decisions, Norty, David Norty, Christian Alvarez, they're okay there. So that's good. Vision, very low. <laughs> Norty has a four. So Norty looks like he's locked into a spot, but a right back I might need to look for. Um, then we look at central backs. Um, again, I like to play possession soccer and looking at these, um, yeah, I have very, very low passing ratings. So I'm probably going to have to take that into account when I'm um, getting ready for to actually play matches. Um, defensive midfielder. Johnson actually doesn't look too bad. I mean, obviously, I would much rather have higher ratings. My team is not very determined at all. Um, but see, even his, his passing is a 5, vision 5. Does make good decisions. So that probably means he decides not to pass because he's not any good at it. Um, supporting central mid. I need help in the central midfield. That's pretty clear. That's going to be a priority. Uh, it's not so much quality but depth Murray mm, yeah not not ideal pretty much need a whole new team really but luckily I'm at a very low level so hopefully the other teams won't be very good either uh, attacking central mid his ratings aren't bad nine vision it needs to be, uh, my whole team needs to be better at passing that might be where I focus on training is working on po just possession in general um, Inside forwards, which really are wingers. Yeah, not great numbers there either. And this is what I do, by the way. I'm I picked this team and I've not really done anything yet. So this is my first looking at it, the team. I thought maybe that would um, be a good way to start the series here is show me looking at the team for the first time. And yeah, these these are my guys who'll be playing out wide and they need help. Yeah, it's bad when your best pat when you're wanting to be play possession soccer and the person with your best passing skill is a left back and his passing attribute is a six. That's not a great start. Um, and then my striker. 
Rast and Lou Live Black. He's wanted by somebody. Maybe I should just go ahead and sell him. Well, they're wanted by Greenville. That's a that would be a lateral move. I think I'd get him to stay. Um, finishing eleven. That's probably good for this level. So Live Black will probably be my starter. Um, so just eyeballing what I see, I need depth. I've got what? Um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Yeah, I got 17. <clears throat> and normally I like to have a smaller team of guys that rotate. So like 18, like strong guys, maybe with a few younger players that I'm rotating in. Um, but the problem with that philosophy is most of the time in the NPSL, the games, your, your fixture congestion is pretty hectic. So like April 28th, and then I'm turning around with a midweek game on that Wednesday, Saturday, Wednesday, Saturday, Wednesday, Saturday. Do have one week off there, and at the end of May. Um, well, and then from the from from June, it's just all Saturday. So that works out for me. Um, well, until I go to July, we have a Monday game, and then Saturday. So, so that might that will work out for me. That what because it's early in the year I'm gonna to have to rotate a lot probably but once I get to June I by then I'll figure out who my guys are and we can roll into hopefully the playoffs with that um, so now let's talk about tactics um, I'm still I've not perfected my tactics yet this is being 100% honest with you yet I I always try to and I've always done this at FM I coach in real life um, I used to coach at a club, but I, because I have a master's in education, I ended up going into education, and now I coach at a school. You know, our, our school is very small. Um, we're not very, not very, well. <laughs> I don't get the quality of player that I got at the club. <clears throat> so, but I love the game, love coaching, I love the kids. So, I but I, in FM, I've always tried to emulate the tactic that I coach with. When I first got into coaching, I actually used to coach the 442 with a box midfield. And you can probably go into the SI forums and dig up a lot of my old FM tactics on the 4222, which is the 442 box midfield. And um, But when US Soccer really wanted to sort of streamline how development was going in our country, I kind of felt, whatever, compelled to get in line right to to go with what um go with what the rest of the of the country was kind of doing developmentally so i started doing a lot of research into the 433 which kind of became where american soccer was going um i didn't totally line up with american soccer because well they were they were really pushing kind of the 4231 were I found I found what I've really of course like anybody else I studied a lot of Pep Guardiola uh, a lot of what they were doing in with you know at Barcelona and in Spain in general read a lot about the Dutch game because that's really kind of where the that Pep style sort of evolved from and so what my effort has been at FM especially this with this version and I've been more successful in this version than in the other ones in creating recreating it and it actually be successful in the game <laughs> um, now it's not perfect yet I'm still playing with it but what you're seeing here this is my we play a tiki taka that's where I started but um, in possession well I'll just talk about sort of what we try and do so in my real life team the way I coach in real life and in FM what I'm looking to do is um, obviously possess the ball control the middle of the field like when I when I'm um, setting out my squad where who is going to play I always try to be strong up the middle right I have a strong spine and with these last few teams I've had I've had some weaker players I've had to stick them out wide um, whereas you know hey Pep Guardiola when he was at Barca had Danny Elvis. I don't have Danny Elvis. <laughs> um, so I have to kind of work that. But so in the game I try and be strong up the middle. And 
just an example. Um, and this is still true when you, well, okay, so it was true in Pep managed Barcelona and Bayern. I haven't watched as much Man City as I did those teams, but he when you're, he's moving the ball from the back to the front, um, the width is the width is supplied by the wingers. So you, what I have inside forwards. So in this game, what I do with my inside forwards, I had a, I have them set as inside forwards, but I have them staying wider. Um, they'll cut inside with the ball. And kind of what I'm trying to, I guess the idea there is, is that what I do with my team in real life is I say, I don't want both my wing back and my winger in the outside zone. If, if my winger's in the outside zone, then I kind of want my fullback in that half space. I don't want him moving all the way out wide. Um, now, when we get, when we push into the opponent's half, we can be a little more aggressive on the wide zone. Um, but the width is when when Pep's teams, and this is, I think, is even still true. Um, but it was certainly true, like at Barca. So you'd have Danny Alves playing left. Um, he 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 would be supplying the width, and I'm blanking on the left back's name. But you, you, you'd see that. and um, So that's what I try and do. I'm trying to recreate that. And it's, I'm not going to lie, it's been a struggle. But um, it's been better than it has in previous versions. And, you know, I'm honestly right or wrong. Um, in FM, I will often try. I prioritize real football over just winning right like I'm not trying to find exploits I'm not trying to do something in the game just because I know that's what works in the game I want to I want you know real football and so um so that's what I've done there so I've got that's my 4-3-3 three, three. um he, I'm, we'll just look at each of the I, I start balanced depending on how the flow of the game is going I might change the mentality but with the ball my attacking width is is narrow um Again, that's mostly how you watch Guardiola's teams play. They don't play out wide. Um, and the idea is they, they want to be close together for possession purpose and to control the middle. Um, I do play out of the defense. I don't really play with the f overlap. Um, I, will <clears throat> I will use the focus play down left or right. Um, obviously, my directness is shorter, meaning to keep the ball and then I have a slightly lower tempo, which I'll play with. Um, I don't usually waste time. When I obviously, if it's at the end of the game, I might tick that up a little bit. But um, in the final third, I'm working the ball into the box. I'm not hitting a bunch of crosses from deep because um, I'm not playing with a big, normally, okay, the ideal. <laughs> I'm not playing with a big, giant header up at striker. Um, and dribble less, be more expressive. Those are pretty standard tiki taka instructions um transitioning again pretty standard i counter press um peps and again it's hard to recreate what we do in real life in the game i tell my guys we have a five to six second rule where we lose the ball we all push forward to win that ball back um and if we haven't got it back in five to six seconds then we uh, we build a wall we all get behind the ball and we get tight and the, so so far the best way I've seen to do that is is the counter press um, I wish I could you know and, and there are limitations in the game but I wish I could counter press for five seconds and then regroup because that's sort of what we do in real life uh, with my teams but it is what it is so when possession has been won uh, I do want to hold shape I don't want guys charging forward because um, we want to get the ball keep it um, and then, you know, 10, 15 passes, build a possession that creates a chance. And we're, and my goalkeeper distributing the ball to the center backs. Don't really have a distribution type. Um, I've heard take short kicks is the best version for this, but I, I, I kind of want my keeper to be rolling it out sometimes. Um, in defense, we're pressing as high as we can, and we have the line pushed as high as we can. Um, I do prevent goalkeeper short goalkeeper distribution I want my my wingers and my striker taking that away and my width defensively very narrow very tight I don't know why you would want to expand your defensive width why you would want to increase gaps I've never seen that um, in real life where teams try that <laughs> and in the game I gotta imagine it would be a disaster so I've always just done the narrowest defensive width possible 
Um, one thing you might notice is I have lowered the pressing intensity to more urgent. And I do that, and I'll show you why, because I want my center backs to um, press less than everybody else. I want them to hold their shape. Um, because if you if they're pressing at the highest intensity, then they are they are charging out of their space and they're leaving space to be exploited. And so I want them to kind of hold their shape a little longer than everybody else. Everybody else, I have them closing down more, as you can see. My back closing down more. Uh, even the defensive mid closing down more. Uh, center mids. Well, you know, I don't think I have them closing down more. I need to set that. It's a good thing we did this. Oh, he already is maximum at all. So, um, wingers, pretty sure they close down more. Yeah, he's already the highest possible. Striker. Yeah, so they all close down more. Um, so, but yeah, lowering the intensity um, for to more urgent instead of you know extremely urgent that will keep my center backs to hold their shape a little longer. All right, so that's my 4-3-3. So that kind of gives you an idea of what kind of players I need to find. I need to find players who can keep the ball, um, pass the ball, um, build attacks from the back. Um, but, you know, the reality is that, you know, I may have to adjust a little bit. You know, there may be some games where I'm just going to have to try and counter and bump it long. That's what most, most people seem to do in lower leagues. I've always kind of had this philosophy that, yeah, I'm not very good, but neither is anybody else. So, um, yeah, if I'm if I'm Emerald Force and I'm playing against NYCFC, then yeah, I, I'm probably not gonna be able to keep possession. Okay, <clears throat> but Emerald Force against the Georgia Revolution, I can probably possess the ball against them. So I'm gonna try and do that. <clears throat> um, I'll also lower the line sometimes if if I have a slower back line and and they're they're kind of they've got a lot of pace up front and that's just their style. I might you know lower my defensive line a little bit and if I do I'll probably lower the line of engagement. But um, you know to really so that I keep that compactness from front to back. But you know besides little engagements like that, that's how I want to play. I do also have a second version where <clears throat> and this is something that I really haven't got to play with much I, I want to though obviously Guardiola when he's at Barca two three years he realized he wanted to change some things up a little bit and so he started having his halfback or the defensive mid drop into the defensive line so that's what I'm gonna try and do create like a three four three version and in this obviously my halfback will hopefully drop back like he's supposed to but I also have both of my center backs playing wider, so we'll see if that actually works. I haven't really played much with it, um, but so that's my tactics. Now, the board. The board tells me that I can go get a staff, and so I, I, I I've debated on whether or not I want to do scouts, but I'm I'm gonna get at least one scout because we need guys. I need some warm bodies because I don't have enough really. And my, my goal here is not to be here long term. So I'm not looking for players to develop. You know, I'm not gonna go look for a bunch of 16 year olds. I need guys that I can roll onto the field now that can help me win games now so that I can get a different job, <laughs> which is probably not the best way to sort of look at taking over a club, but that's, I'm not planning on being here long. Um, if I get out of here the first season, awesome. But I'm thinking it might take two because I have to get rid of all those NPSL pro teams to have a chance to win the win the NPSL. <clears throat> so we'll go hire staff. Now this is my process. I, I do it, I've always done it this way. Um, I just go to the job center. And here I will um, place an advert. So I need an assistant. So I'll go and place an advertisement for the assist for an assistant. And I'll do that with all the, the roles. Um, I have no staff right now. So we look at our coaching team. It's me. <laughs> I'm the only guy. We'll look at my manager here in a second. Um, don't really have a medical team. Don't have a scouting team. So I've got to go get, I've got to fill my staff. And again, I'm not worried about the long-term health of the club. 
so I am going to fill the staff, right? If I was worried, if I wanted the team to be making money, be stockpiling cash, then I might be a little more selective with, with how big a staff I build. But, you know, I'm not worried about that. Uh, I'm not worried about the long-term financial health of the club because I don't plan on being here long. If this was a club where I, or a game where I could get them promoted, maybe I would. But um, I don't really need money. And the truth is most of, these guys, most of these guys are all on, like, amateur or whatever you call it, contracts. So they're not going to be long-term anyway. Um, training. I'm not going to pretend to be a training expert. Um, right now, my and I'm watching videos on this, but my knowledge, my training process is very rudimentary. Um, I'll probably save that for another video since this one's gone so long. Um, what else was I gonna? Oh, so I do have this. This is the um, F the in game editor. I never use this. I, I I get it for a couple of reasons. First of all, it helps when I'm. Um, when I'm doing my editing, which every version of this game, I, I do a lot of with the editor and probably play the editor as much as I play the game. <laughs> so um, the in-game editor helps me during testing. If I need to test different things, um, if I get so far into a game and I want to I want to change something with the testing. Um, so I use that a lot. And then I also, the reality of capitalism is that companies will market more towards regions areas where there is a market and so I want I want SI to make as much money off of the American market as possible <laughs> I used to buy worldwide soccer manager um, when they used they used to make it and for the purpose of <laughs> giving money to SI so that they would hopefully um, focus more attention on on the on the American market and I guess I can't speak for SI but it does feel like they they give MLS a lot of attention um, MLS is is as realistic as it is in the game um, because SI has has worked pretty hard to make it so um, so I want to you know I want them to see the American market as a place where they can profit and so so yeah I'll, I'll make little goofy purchases like that I used to buy all the stuff like they don't do as much of the DLC as they used to, but I would buy all of it and never use half of it. Um, so, so I do have it. I don't, I don't cheat with it, but if, <clears throat> but it's there, okay. And that's what is what I use it for. If you want to accuse me of cheating, then go right ahead. I really don't care <laughs> what what people say about it. But when you see it, um, yeah. So I've, there's my explaining is that I use it in testing, and then I use it to try and help SI to value the American market a little more. So, um, so with that said, let's real quick look at the schedule. Um, we've got some friendlies in January, February, but I'm probably going to cancel those. I don't really see the point in playing games, playing friendlies three months before my first match. So what I'll do is I'll cancel this Atlanta United friendly, and then it's friendly against the Rowdies. And then I'll keep all these. These are probably a little more realistic anyway. <laughs> these are all teams at my level. Um... Whereas Tampa Bay and Atlanta United, those are USL championship teams. They will, they will absolutely run me off the field. And, and my, <clears throat> I do, and when I'm creating my preseason, which these preseason friendlies were already scheduled for me. That's how it is at the beginning of a game. When I make my own schedule, I'm looking for really just getting my guys fit and getting the morale up. And you're not going to get morale up from a 10-0 loss. So I'll cancel those, and then I don't need them anyway. And then we'll get started in March with the Villages, which is a USL2 team. Um, so, with that said, if you have... Oh, that was what I was going to talk about real quick. My um, my manager. So, I've made a manager called Jack Shepard. Jack was my... Um, well, he was the main character on the television show Lost, if you watch that. And I used a picture of, of Jack Shepard to create my manager face. Um, made him born in Los Angeles. I did send him make him be born in 91 so he can kind of be of a, a young manager because um, again the hope is to make this a long career let him work his way up to MLS um, maybe even to Europe uh, international winning the World Cup someday we'll see we'll see where this thing goes but this was the FM 19 version of American Football episode 1 or what I would call the pilot so 
I will uh, let that be the end of it and see you guys next episode.